there was like an interview or something, and I, I think it was you, where uh, it came up how like how Johnny Knoxville and the Jackass guys like came together to like step in and do an intervention on me, which ultimately saved my life, man. You know, like I've been clean and clean and sober ever since. And uh, there was something, it was a really like, like a touching, like, it, you know, it made, really made me like emotional to hear, I think it was you saying, man, if only we could have done that for ODB, you know, yeah. like, yeah. And, yeah. uh, it's just not always it's not always that easy man it's uh you know and i mean you you speak from experience so you know how hard yeah. that is and then in a sense that when dirty got locked up isolated from the people he loved um I, not a lot of members went to go visit old dirty i personally went there once with rizza to go visit dirty i didn't like what I had saw. Um, so Dirty coming home from that, you know, a lot of love and care from his family. His mom was there, you know, a lot of support. Um, but I don't think it was enough to keep Dirty from being old Dirty. Yeah. And like someone, I, I can't speak to that addiction, but I understand but in the same breath, I feel like people, that shit is so fucking selfish in yeah. a sense that especially people that need you here, I'm pretty sure his family would rather have him here, especially his kids and his grandkids. They would rather have him here clean and sober and boring then you know back to the essence i, I mean, do i don't think odb ever could have been boring man there's no <laughs> fucking way that he could have been boring dude i agree i agree i agree it's such a and such a beautiful soul too because if you knew anything about dirty dirty love people love the shit out of people but he had his vices you know yeah uh, yeah, the world would be a better place right now if he was still here i tell you that much man yeah, yeah dude how'd you meet dirty um, through RZA, through RZA, and it was just this, this loud, the thing about Dirty that stood out to me was impeccably dressed all the time, and just loud, and always had a 40 ounce in his hand, you know, and his cadence was always different, he never, in my opinion, said his verses the same way twice, ever. And he proved it on his album because he did the same verse <laughs> on three different records on that album. The same verse. I'll grab the mic and I'll damage you. That verse, he did it three times on that album. Not the refurbished one. Get the original copy because they took it, they took that song off of there and added um a song off the Jerky Boy soundtrack called Dirty Dancing. <laughs> but he did it three times. The same verse. Ask Rizza, Rizza vouched for me for this. And said it different all three times to the point where people didn't even notice it. You probably wouldn't have noticed if I didn't tell you. Yeah, but it's, definitely, it's <laughs> definitely still on there twice. Guess what? I have the number 30 ranked hot sauce on all of Amazon. It's called Stevo's Hot Sauce for Your Butthole. And if you go on Amazon and type in Stevo's Hot Sauce for Your Butthole and Order yourself a bottle. You'd be really helping me because right now we're ranked number 30 on all of Amazon. And if you buy a bottle, we might go up the ladder and that would mean a lot. So please get on Amazon and buy Stevo's hot sauce for your butthole. Yeah. Yeah, dude.